Whenever the divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation, God adorns the person chosen with all the gifts the Spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand. St. Bernardine of Siena. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today, we're going to discuss the life of St. Bernardine of Siena, who dedicated his life to the service of others and preaching the Word of God, especially devotion to his holy name. Let us begin his story. In the year 1400, a young man came to the door of the largest hospital in Siena. A plague was raging through the city, so horrible that as many as 20 people died each day just in the hospital alone. Seems uh, not all that significant considering what we're going through right now, but anyway. And many of the people who died were those who were needed to tend the ill. It was a desperate situation. More and more people were falling ill and fewer and fewer people were there to help them. St. Bernadine, who was the young man standing at the door, offered to run the hospital, and with the help of the other young men with him, nursed patients there for four months. He escaped the plague himself, but was so exhausted that a fever confined him for several months. He spent another year caring for a beloved aunt whose parents had died when he was a child, and at her death began to fast and pray to know God's will for him. At 22, he entered the Franciscan order and was ordained two years later. For almost a dozen years, he lived in solitude and prayer, but his gifts ultimately caused him to be sent to preach. These gifts that they are speaking of here was a vast knowledge of the sacred sciences, especially that of theology. A problem he had, though, was a weak voice and hoarseness, so his voice sounded really weird and messed up. However, as soon as he was given his mission from his superiors, after a time of prayer, the natural weakness and hoarseness of his voice vanished. He always traveled on foot, sometimes speaking for hours in one place and doing the same in another town. So this would be referenced back to the quote that I started this episode with. Whenever the divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation, God adorns the person chosen with all the gifts of the Spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand. He was given this mission to preach, and so the natural weakness of his voice was taken so that he was able to accomplish this mission. He was the greatest preacher of his time, journeying across Italy, calming strife-torn cities, attacking the paganism he found rampant, attracting crowds of 30,000 following St. Francis of Assisi's admonition to preach about vice and virtue, punishment and glory. The Pope of the time compared him actually with St. Paul. St. Bernardine had a keen intuition of the needs of the time, along with solid holiness and boundless energy and joy. He was also especially known for his devotion to the holy name of Jesus. Bernadine devised a symbol, which is an IHS, which is the first three letters of the name of Jesus in Greek, in Gothic lettering on a blazing sun. Some, you must have all have seen this at some point, the, the letters IHS with the sun behind them. It is a very common uh, symbol of the name of our Lord. This was actually initiated, this symbol was initiated by St. Bernardine of Siena. This was to displace the superstitious symbols of the day as well as the insignia of factions. So the Catholic Church has done this before. It will use pagan ideas or pagan symbols and use them rather for spreading the Catholic faith. Uh, An obvious one, and you say almost a recent one, is Our Lady of Guadalupe. If you look at the tilma of Our Lady, you can see you can see a couple of things. One, the sun is behind her, the moon is under her feet, and she's wearing the stars on her cloak. This was able to crush, if you will, 
the idea of worshiping the sun, worshiping the moon, and worshiping the stars, which was prevalent in that day among the pagans. It shows that this lady is so great that she blocks out the sun, that she stands on the moon, and that she wears the stars around herself. So this is the same general idea, the idea of worshiping the sun. Well, why worship the sun? when the name of Jesus is so much greater than the sun. So as to help show the pagans that you worship the sun, but I know someone so much greater than the sun. And as I said, the church has done this in the past. St. Bernadine used it here for his, his symbol of our Lord. General of the Friars of the Strict Observance, a branch of the Franciscan order, Bernadine strongly emphasized scholarship and further study of theology and canon law. When he started there at that specific community, there were 300 friars. When he died, there were 4,000. So it was a very great increase in that particular monastery. He returned to preaching the last two years of his life, dying later while his brothers of the monastery chanted, quote, Father, I have manifested thy name to men. He was canonized a few years later by Pope Nicholas V. From the life of St. Bernadine, let us learn to love the word of God preached to us by our priests and also at the commentaries of the saints and be ready to follow that word to the end of our lives. And let us also develop that great devotion to the holy name. The name of our Lord nowadays is used so impiously let us use it rather for what is meant to be as a word of adoration for our Savior and Lord. St. Bernadine is our last saint for the next couple of days. Tomorrow is Ascension Thursday, and I'm not sh quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I have a couple of ideas, but I will leave you in anticipation of what that will be. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, Friday and Saturday are feria days. Saturdays are lady on Saturdays, but there's no feast for that day specifically, nor is there one for Sunday. So tomorrow we will discuss, it'll be something to do with the ascension of our Lord. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be a continuation of our other uh, section of the podcast, Relics of Christendom. So that'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday episodes two, three, and four, unless I kind of drag Relics of Christendom into it tomorrow, in which case it would be two, three, four, and five. Doesn't matter. Point is, is that we're done with the saints until Monday. Monday, which is St. Gregory the Seventh and St. Urban the First. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. Bernadine of Siena, pray for us. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name.